Let's have a look at the tracking options that will influence the tracking performance. So here you can go to the track tab where you have all these different options and I will explain all of them now. So first of all we can switch on or off deformation which will mean whether we track expressions or not. So if I just have that basically I will only have the rigid head pose track. Then I also have this filtering button which will determine whether we filter the head pose. If I switch it off you can see my head is actually quite unstable. By switching it on it's very stable but it has a disadvantage, it will also filter very small motions. So if I have this very small motion, now let's switch on deformation again, you'll see that motion first of all on the face and it will not follow that. By switching off the filtering, you don't have this slightly wobbling. So it, it's up to you, it depends on your performance. Then you can switch on or off resampling. Um, the resampling will uh, be a lot slower, but it will be a bit more accurate. So this is particularly interesting if you use it with a retrack or the refine. Then let's have a look here. You can have bounded tracking. Bounded tracking means that all the blend shapes will be between zero and one. Now, if you set to unbounded, it means that all the shapes can also be negative. That means in terms of tracking that we are much more flexible but that the actual shapes that we get out here are not necessarily meaningful. So this again depends on your application. If you're exporting markers, then you don't care about these blend shape sets. But if you're using the blend shape information directly, so for example in the Maya plugin, in that case you need to have these between 0 and 1. That's why we also have a third option which says unbounded and project. So it will do unbounded tracking, but it will always make sure that at the end the shapes are between 0 and 1. Again here this is, largely depends on your performance and you should really check out these different settings. Next one is the influence between geometry and texture. So I can only use geometry to track or I just use texture to track. So texture is just using the video information. Geometry will use solely this depth information for tracking. Typically it's always good to do a trade-off between the two. But again, if for example, the scene is very dark, then you should have more influence of the geometry. If you have very good lighting, then you should put more on the texture. Geometry is really good for large expressions. Texture is very good in doing stabilizing the tracking and the very small motions. And generally, it's good to be a trade-off between the two. Then you can also have smoothing. So you can have smoothing on the eyebrows and on the mouth. The brows is an, a bit less sensitive. Um, typically, the value you should leave it as it is. The mouth will make a big difference. So if you have a very large uh, smoothing eye, you can actually see that we are losing all of the performance. You can put it to zero. That's going to be very, very snappy performance, but also a bit more jittery. So again, this is something you need to look at. Lastly, you can define here which shapes you want to use. So you can enable or disable certain shapes. So for example, it's a bit drastic. Let's switch off the jaw open motion. So I cannot track jaw open anymore. So the jaw open down here, um, let's go there, will always be zero. It's just if some of the shapes you're not interested in, you can switch these off as well. Okay, so these are all the settings. Definitely have a look at them and play with them and check out what works best with your actor.